on this captive population. So people are, women and children are strip searched, uh, sometimes in very grotesque ways. I've written an article about that. I've interviewed people. We have the interviews on our website. Uh, I, I, I heard of one story, this isn't even in my article, I discovered it afterwards on a, another trip where I talked to a family, for any of the Christians here, uh, I talked to a family of Palestinian Christian family in Bethlehem. The mother had, there were two young children. The mother had wanted to take her children to an Easter egg hunt in Jerusalem, an Easter egg hunt. Uh, when they got to the checkpoint, this, for some reason her daughter, who was I think about eight years old, about that age, the, the metal detectors, detector, something kept going off when she went through it. Now if it was just set wrong or why it was going on, none of us know. You know, she emptied out her pockets and the, you know, nobody could figure out. So the soldier told her, made her take off her pants in front of everybody, in front of the crowd. Now, if any of you remember what it's like to be a small girl, what that would feel like. That's the sort of thing that goes on. There are, uh, there are worse stories that I won't go into now, but there are worse stories. So, you know, what Israel always uses as its pretext is, oh, it's security. Every, every reason they will just say it's security. However, there have been studies uh, by journalists of considerable integrity and excellence who have shown that's false. So in the Israeli media often this, these have been exposed. There have been a few minimal investigations and there are women, Israeli women, who are part of a group called Maxim Watch, a checkpoint watch that will go there. Many of them are still Zionists in that they favor a Jewish state, they're, they feel they're loyal Israeli citizens, but they oppose cruelty and humiliation of civilians. So some of them go to these checkpoints and have seen these types of actions and try to prevent them. Um, thank you. Is this on? Thank you um, for describing the really tragic impact of war on one side. Of course, it also affects the other side. And I'm wondering if you will today denounce one of the causes of that war, which is Hamas, whose charter calls for the murder of Jews, the obliteration of Israel, and its replacement with this in, an Islamic caliphate, and Hezbollah, which call, and Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, hoped that all Jews would gather in Israel so he wouldn't have to hunt them around the world. Will you denounce these genocidal organizations who have done more to harm Palestinians and Israelis? This is going to be the last um, question in the interest of time. Thank you. Uh, I certainly oppose, as I hope you will join me, in opposing all ethnic cleansing, all genocide. It's going on now. Uh, the International Court of Justice found that to be the case. And it is time for us to oppose all genocide and to do our best to prevent all violence. Now, uh, it is my turn. You may sit down and I'll answer your question. Uh, many of the assumptions in your question were inaccurate. Let's look at the facts of this. Uh, the violence, time after time after time, in this conflict, and all of the deaths are tragic. All of the deaths are tragic. The violence in over 96% of the time is initiated by Israeli forces. A study was done by a very respected, very prominent professor at MIT who did a study of the different conflict pauses and truces that have occurred in the last nine some years in this conflict. She and her colleagues discovered that in 96% of the short pauses, say that went on, I believe it was around four days, 96% of the time it was Israeli forces that initiated the violence that killed civilians first. When it was a longer pause or truce, 100% of the time it was Israeli forces that initiated the violence that initiated another round of cycle of violence in which innocent people among both populations are killed. For example, in Gaza, uh, 
a year and a half ago that began in December of 2009 and continued through, through January of 2010, if I'm getting these dates correctly, yeah, or maybe it was the year before. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it was actually, that violence killed 1,400 Palestinian men, women, and children. I hope you have spoken out opposing that massacre. During that period, nine Israelis were killed by Palestinians. Nine Israelis were killed by Palestinians during that period. I believe perhaps as many as two or three of those were civilians. These facts are not disputed. They are very available for people to learn. Secondly, what most people, there were four other Israeli soldiers who were killed by Israeli fire. So if you'd like to include those, that makes 13 Israelis killed compared to 1,400 Palestinian Christians, Muslims, men, women, and children. These are the facts. Uh, secondly, what the media finally, finally CNN corrected its own coverage, but it only ran the correction once, so I doubt that you saw it, sadly. The, the reason and the way that that violence began was that there had been another one of these ceasefires that began the June before. Israeli forces then killed someone the first day after the ceasefire. I think it was a fisherman down in southern Gaza. In November, they killed six or seven more Palestinians, violating the ceasefire twice, killing a total of about, as I recall, about seven Palestinians. And then, and in addition, part of this truce had been that Israel was going to stop its illegal siege of Gaza in which they are using medicine and food, according to Christian Aid Society, they are using medicine and food to punish the entire one and a half million people that live in Gaza. This is illegal and unconscionable. The, after those three violations, in which Israeli forces had killed Palestinians. Then some you. rockets were fired. Israeli, use, Israeli forces used that as a pretext. This has been well reported in the Israeli media, and they committed a major massacre that was for a few days on television. What was not on television is that it's sort of like a tsunami or an earthquake or a hurricane. It's like Haiti or the tsunami or Katrina. After that, in this case, man-made catastrophe, there is, of course, months, sometimes years, of misery in which people have lost their homes, their loved ones, their lives, sometimes their limbs, their, say, you know, massive humanitarian misery continues for months and months. It's usually covered. This was not covered in Gaza. It still continues today, that kind of misery that we see in Haiti, but we don't see it. it. It was going on in Gaza. It's still going on in Gaza because what Israeli forces are doing, they're preventing the medicine and the building materials to get into Gaza. So all of these homes have been destroyed. Schools were destroyed. Churches and mosques were destroyed. They can't rebuild them because Israel isn't allowing concrete to get in for them to, them to, to build. Plus, all of these 1,400 people were killed. Many more were injured. I don't remember the number offhand. It's, you can look into that and determine it for yourself. Thousands were injured. And yet, a multitude of Palestinian clinics and hospitals were destroyed. So here you have this major man-made humanitarian catastrophe with all of these injured people and the hospitals destroyed. You know, how are you going to treat them? And the medical treatment that they need, the x-ray films, the anesthesia that you need in operating rooms, all of them are scarce, desperately needed in Gaza, and yet Israeli forces are preventing those from getting into Gaza. Uh, thank you, thank you for listening. Thank you very much. That's all the time we have for questions. Thank you for coming out today. As a part of our Israeli Apartheid Week, we are making a call to boycott, divest, and sanction the apartheid state of Israel. And if you would like to sign the petition, you can find one at the accessories table near the mock wall, or please ask any of the MSU members and they will direct you. We hope you will join us later today at 2 p.m. at the Cross Cultural Center's Ring Room for our second event with Ms. Allison Weir entitled, If Americans Knew, Part 2. Also tonight at 8 p.m., Professor William Robinson will be giving a talk entitled UC Israel in Crystal Clove Auditorium. Thank you for your time. I hope that, 
and tell other people to come too, Ms. Weir has asked me to tell you. Thank you for your time. I hope the program was informative and beneficial to you, and may peace be upon you. Thank you.